What's up everybody? It's Robert coming to you from the Old Bird Farm and today we're going to take a little bit of a closer look at this old carbide acetylene generator back here. Now if you haven't seen the videos on this before I'm going to explain what it is again. I know a lot of you guys already know what this is uh, but some of y'all watching may not have seen the videos on this before and uh, we're also going to be doing some excavating and some poking around it so should be pretty fun. I've only got maybe about an hour before it starts pouring rain here and uh, I also will talk about something I want to do with this coming up in the future. So let's get started. All right. So first, the explanation of what this is, if you don't already know. This is a acetylene generator that was powered with carbide. Carbide and water together creates acetylene gas. This right here is the carbide hopper that would have worked with a uh, clockwork mechanism. You can see a weight right there. And there's a plunger right here on the bottom and that would have operated opened and closed and released carbide powder that would have been in this hopper down into the water that would have been on the bottom of this tank or in the bottom of this tank the combination again of the water and carbide created acetylene gas the acetylene gas would have then been plumbed into the old birdhouse here there's the pipe sticking out the side of the house and if you look at the attic video i did when the roof was off of the house we could see all of those gas lines running through the roof of the house of course they're all disconnected now and yes i am leaving them up there because they are part of the history of this house and i always say this this is the way that they lit this house at night before electricity so if you can imagine driving by here you know in the turn of the century late 1800s early 1900s and see this house all lit up at night with gas lights powered by the kind of very self-sufficient uh, powered by the carbide generator that was here on the property and this was apparently a pretty common technology that has just been lost uh, there were a lot of houses in this area that had carbide generators and gas lights but here in you know 100 years later in 2022 not a lot of people know what this is so i've made a video of it before i didn't know what it was at first when we dug it out of the ground because when it was first here it was just it was just this ring right here that was exposed and it was filled up with dirt so i dug it out and found out uh, and saw this and had no clue what it was and then i figured out what it was <clears throat> but i made a video on it and not a lot of people knew what it was um and i made a tiktok video on it recently and i think only one person guessed the right answer as to what it was so it's really interesting how uh, technology like this can just be lost to time. So basically this just worked the same as a uh, carbide miner's lamp worked. So that being said, that's the explanation of what it is. Now we're going to get into some work with this today. All right, so this carbide tank is about uh, seven feet deep from here down. <clears throat> so one thing that I want to do is build what's going to look like a well house around this. And that's basically what I'm building around it is a well house. Uh, I'm doing it so I can, for one, kind of keep some water out of it from filling up as much as it does when it rains, but also to keep people from accidentally stepping into it. But it's also going to be a museum piece out here on the old bird farm. Uh, I'm going to get a sign made to go on the well house. It says carbide generator circa 1880, you know, 1900, whatever. But before I do that, I want to excavate around this carbide generator uh, just to see if there's any other machinery that would have worked with this. Uh, there was, uh, there, like I said, there were counterweight systems that worked with this. So I want to see if that's still buried in the ground. I also want to see if there is a tag because I've seen pictures of these that had a tag riveted on the side of them uh, that said what model they were. Uh, Colt was a manufacturer of these. Uh, and there were, of course, many other companies that made them as well, I believe. I have seen other companies that made them, but Colt stands out. Uh, but so I want to do some excavating around it and see if there's anything uh, else buried in the ground that's connected to this. Um, I've also seen these that had a pressure tank. So I'd wonder if the pressure tank might be buried around here as well. Uh, so I want to do all of that before we build the well house. That'll be upcoming, uh, weather dependent, as we know. I have a soil probe here. So this is used for multiple things. 
Um, this can be used uh, for finding, you know, underground pipes, that sort of thing. Uh, this is also used uh, in some cases for finding unmarked graves, for identifying unmarked graves. Um, while I know how to do that personally, I never do that because that is considered an uh, intrusive method on the grave. But if you have a, a grave site the soil where the grave is will be softer than the soil around the grave so you can use a probe to identify that by the disruption in the soil it'll be softer where it's been dug even if it was you know 150 years ago uh, that being said that is an intrusive considered an intrusive method of identifying graves and personally i never do that um, when out looking for old cemeteries or anything like that but that's one one thing this can be used for um, the other thing, uh, you can use it for um, uh, probing for bottles, that sort of thing. Um, see if you can locate old uh, outhouses, old privies, that sort of thing too. Uh, so I'm going to use it today and see what's around this carbide generator here. Now, obviously they would have had to do a lot of digging to put this 7 foot tank into the ground. So the soil around it should be pretty soft. This should probe very easily and we're gonna see if we hit anything that I might want to excavate and reveal for the museum piece of the uh, well house we'll call it a well house around this thing so let's do that and as you know I've already got really soft soil here but you can just see how easy that goes into the ground um, it may go because of the type of soil I've got out here it may go very easily everywhere see not not really right there yeah, see, you can tell a noticeable difference in the soil right here that, as far as I know, hasn't been dug up versus the soil around this tank that we know was dug up. This just goes right into the ground. And I'm not hitting anything so far around this tank. And this is a, a three and a half foot probe. Okay, so we definitely have something right here that's underground. Is that about uh, two feet? No? About a foot and a half underground right there. So, right here, let me find it again. Yeah, definitely something underground right there. Of course, it could be a root or something like that. It feels like, feels like metal. And it's close up against this tank. I'm going to go ahead and finish going around the tank. <laughs> right, let's see. I think that was... Yeah, right here. We've got something that sounds like metal underground there so i'm gonna go ahead and start digging there try to get down and see what that is and then we'll just excavate around this carefully and see if we see any tags or anything like that on the side so i'm gonna throw you on a time lapse
All right, so no such luck. Dug down and found what I hit. It was just a perfectly placed rock, which is okay. Um, you know, stuff like that happens. When you're doing something like that. Uh, but it was just a perfectly placed rock that sounded real good up against this carbide generator. So I've got this, and this is a little bit lower than I want to trench around here. I really just want to bring it down, you know, maybe half a foot just to show the, uh, the outside of this. Uh, so I probed all around it again and didn't hit anything else in the ground around this. And I know, and I know that some of y'all will suggest why not use a metal detector for this. It's because that's a big piece of metal right there to just drive metal detector crazy. Um, I was really hoping that there would be some kind of mechanism that went with this somewhere around this tank. Um, I'm not exactly sure what kind of tank this was, uh, what brand it was, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so it may have had another tank. I, I've also seen pictures of these where they had another tank that sat on top of this tank that acted uh, as, I guess, a pressurizer tank that sent the gas up to the house. So that may be the case with this one. It may have had a tank that was sitting on top of it versus another one that was around. And that other tank may have held all the clockwork mechanism and all that sort of thing. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, I didn't find anything, so it kind of sucks, but uh, I wanted a little bit more of it to uh, display for uh, museum purposes. But we don't have anything else there, so uh, it doesn't appear that way. So I'm just going to dig around about a foot in a square around this tank where we'll put a well house on top of that and uh, get it displayed. So I'm going to get back to digging and fill in my deeper hole. Oh, and if you didn't see, I've been fighting Wisteria digging around this thing too. Always with the Wisteria. All right, let's get to it. So I just accidentally dug up a cicada here. Thankfully I didn't hurt him. Um, so him before I scooped him up accidentally. But we're gonna bury him back here in this area beside the uh, carbide generator. So he'll come out and make a lot of noise for us in a couple months. You know, those are some loud birds over there. People are asking a lot in the comments on the video what kind of birds are making all that racket? And uh, so if you're new to the channel and don't know, I can't even speak over them. If you're new to the channel and don't know, I have a bunch of guinea fowl. Guinea fowl, aside from being loud and obnoxious and good watchdogs for the yard, are really good at eating ticks and getting rid of bugs like that on your property. And when I first started cleaning up this old farm, it was absolutely filled with ticks around here. So that's why I got all the loudmouth guineas. And if there's something that I hate more than wisteria, and I wouldn't say more than wisteria, if there's something that I hate equally to wisteria, it's definitely privet. That stuff has to grow like six inches a day. But anyway, what I was gonna say is, you know, you would think that just excavating around this, you know, just a foot in the ground to expose it a little bit more would be easy work. But because of the amount of wisteria that's in the ground, around this thing it is it is not it is not the birds aren't gonna let me birds aren't gonna let me talk so this is the trouble with wisteria right here aside from just running on top of the ground um under the soil you've got you know six inches down you've got wisteria roots crisscrossing all different ways that makes it really really hard to dig in a situation like this
All right, guys. Well, that was pretty fun. I uh, didn't get as deep down around the carbide generator as I wanted to, or the acetylene generator, I should say, uh, as I wanted to today. But as you guys heard, or can probably hear, can you hear it? I'm getting rained out. Uh, so I'm in the canning shed right now. Just put all my tools in here. Um, so next weather permitting day I get, we'll go back out there and continue excavating just a little bit deeper around the carbide generator. Um, I was really hoping to run into a tag or something that identified what model it is, but as far down as I got, uh, I don't think I'm going to. Uh, and also construct the, uh, the well house sort of thing around it and uh, put up a sign identifying what it is. But we did get some progress today. Work was slow going with all that wisteria in the ground. And I know a lot of y'all are concerned about all the tin on the ground around the house. Trust me, I'm concerned about it too. As soon as I get the tractor back over here, we're gonna pick all that up and clean it back up again. So uh, sorry, sorry for the short video today. I uh, didn't get as much done as I wanted to, but that's what happens when you're, uh, you're working with the weather. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and uh, I had to go feed some chickens. I'll see you next time.